What is up, guys? Welcome to 1010 Talk. This is Adam, and this is... Aista. And we are here to give my top three reasons why the Speedmaster is the GOAT, the greatest of all time. Uh, a couple episodes of back, you guys would have seen Aista's three reasons. Uh, without further ado, let's get right into it. Reason number one why the Speedmaster is the greatest of all time. Um, and I think this is one that is not talked about enough but the design in terms of history. So with a lot of watches these days, Seamasters, um, um, uh, Rolex Submariners, Daytonas, all these different watches, designs have changed um, over the last 50, 60 years. Even GMTs, Rolex GMTs, a lot of different watches that have like Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms and all those. A lot of those watches, the designs have kind of stuck to the watch's DNA but they've also changed pretty drastically. Like for example, the Submariner, you have ceramic bezels now, um, you have the maxi cases, you have the plot, the loom plots that have changed size from the maxi plots, to the smaller plot plots in the 14060 and back, use of white gold and gilt dial and, and matte dial and gloss dial, things have changed a lot. But for the Speedmaster, since the mid to late 60s, this design has pretty much remained the exact same. And I think that's just a testament to how well this is actually designed. You still have the aluminum bezel. There's no ceramic bezels. I know there are a lot of limited edition Speedmasters and different variations of the Speedy, but the true moon watch, as you see it today in its 42 millimeter case, um, the pushers, the bezel, the materials that are used, the, the look of the dial, everything has pretty much stayed the exact same. Only thing that has changed is little tiny little nuances like the text on S of Speedmaster or the step dial from the early 70s versus post, uh, post 70s and things like that. But it's just a testament to how well this was designed that it stayed true to its design for over 50 years at this point. Reason number two that the Speedmaster is the greatest of all time. There's something about the proportions of the dial and it's kind of difficult to describe unless you actually see a Speedmaster in person. So I don't know what it is. It, it's got to be something that has to do with the golden ratio, but the ratio of subdials to dial and dial size to bezel thickness, bezel thickness to case size, case size to subdial size, there's something that's really magical when you actually have one of these in person and are able to look at it and see it. What do you think about that? Yes, I agree with you. The symmetry, the balance, the proportions, yes. Um, but I think beyond all of that, I think it's just like very, very visually aesthetic and just kind of soothing to look at. Is that mm -hmm. it? Yeah, I think the way it flows, the lines, especially with the, with the twisted lugs, that really adds um, a lot to the look. And I think what actually adds to the charm and the um, sort of the proportions, these golden proportions that I'm talking about, is the acrylic plexi uh, crystal, the, the Hesalite crystal that you have on here. It's not a traditional sapphire crystal. So um, whereas the Speedy Sapphire Sandwich is a little bit colder and a little bit more sterile because of the sapphire bezel, even though it's more scratch resistant, this um, this plastic bezel that is not found on many watches these days, mostly only vintage watches and the Speedmaster still, gives it sort of a warmer vibe, which is probably kind of what that lightness... What I was about. trying to talk, what yeah. I was trying to say. So, so that acrylic crystal really sort of, with the way it reflects light, gives the dial a little bit of a warmer feeling to it. So third and final reason, which is kind of the most obvious reason, as everyone knows, is this is the moon watch. And we're gonna go back to the historical aspect of this watch. And as everyone knows, this is the watch that went to the moon in 1969. Uh, it is 2019 now, so we're in the 50th anniversary of the moon watch. So to have that kind of provenance behind a watch, um, which of course Omega has taken full advantage, of, full advantage of, as you guys have seen in all the limited editions they come out with every year, I think just being able to tell, like someone that has no idea about watches, and they ask you, oh, what is that? You're like, and you say, oh, it's the Speedmaster, it's the Moonwatch. You say, Moonwatch? What do you mean it's the Moonwatch? Well, and then you go into the whole history of all the Speedmasters that have gone into space, 
the fact that it, it still is NASA flight qualified, which definitely appeals to the aerospace nerds out there. And the fact that it just actually was on the moon itself is, uh, is a big piece of, uh, of the Speedy and why I think it's the GOAT. This exact one. Okay, so for all you people who are going out in space yeah. and working with NASA. You never know. That one's for Maybe you. in 10 years, Elon Musk will have some kind of crazy thing where people can go up in space for... We're going to be living in Mars. A thousand dollars? Probably not, but... Yep, it's the greatest watch of all time. So if you guys disagree, you're definitely wrong. On that note, follow me at 1010 underscore talk on Instagram. Make sure you subscribe if you have not already. We're coming out with much more regularly scheduled content. I'm um, featuring ISO on all the videos I can now. Um, and the ones that I want to be on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which is like all of them. <laughs> That's kind of... I'm pathetic. But anyways, um, we will catch you guys in the next video. See you later. Bye.